This right here is the latest release from the Dingle Distillery, Konacht an Arik. Let's check it out in this week's review. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Matt, I'm the Whiskey Nerd and like I said, this is the latest release from Dingle, Konacht an Arik. So let's get it into the glass and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Now first off, the Dingle Distillery. So, the Dingle Distillery, if you're not familiar with them, they're kind of like Ireland's first of the new wave of distilleries, if that makes sense, because for a long time there were only one or two or kind of three technically distilleries in Ireland operating and producing whiskey, but nowadays there are loads. I think there's over 50 distilleries making whiskey, but Dingle were one of the first of these kind of new craft distilleries that started up. They started off, I think about 13 years ago, it's over a decade. They recently did release a limited edition kind of special single cask that was 10 year old whiskey that they distilled themselves. So they're in that area now where they're maybe looking to put out a age statement release. And one of the things when you're making whiskey, you don't typically, as soon as you hit 10 years old, you don't put out a 10 year old whiskey because then you're never gonna have a 15 year old whiskey or an 18 year old whiskey. So they're in that stage now where they're getting ready for it and they're releasing this series right here, the Celtic Wheel of the Year series. It's a two year series with different releases to mark different kind of Celtic or pagan holidays here in Ireland. And this one here is Konacht on Arik, which is the spring equinox. And it's actually pretty much directly translated. Arik means spring and Konacht is like the equal night, like you would say in Latin, the equinox, the equal night. So it's just that kind of time when spring has officially sprung, like it's not the first day of spring, but we're properly into spring now. The day and night are 12 hours long. You get a nice bit of brightness into the kind of atmosphere. The plants start to actually come into bloom now and the animals are a bit more lively. So they're releasing a kind of a, a lively whiskey to mark the occasion. As with all the releases, it comes in a really nice kind of presentation box with the symbol up there and the symbol is here and it's repeated on this kind of wheel here, which you can see. And those symbols, once the, the whiskey is released, they turn gold. So as you can see on the box, there's only two releases left here. There's the uh, equinox in winter, and then there's the summer solstice, which is the longest day of the year that happens in June. So we know when the next couple of releases are, but I have heard, despite there being eight symbols in that wheel, there's actually a secret ninth whiskey, which they will be releasing. And I believe it's this one right here. This is the kind of a secret symbol they've hidden there. That's the symbol for Dingle Distillery. They've got it on top of their bottles. They've got it kind of everywhere. It's the Ren Boy. I'll talk more about that whiskey when it releases and I think it's gonna be releasing for around Christmas time, which is like when the Ren's Day Festival happens on St. Stephen's Day on the 26th of December. But right now we're talking with this whiskey right here, the Connacht and Arik. It's a single malt whiskey distilled by the Dingle Distillery. It's all distilled by them and it was aged in bourbon casks for about five years and then given a long kind of a, a finishing, but it's almost like a secondary maturation of about two and a half to almost three years in Cabernet Sauvignon wine barrel. So it's almost like a secondary maturation. So the whiskey is about seven to eight years old. It's in that kind of space. They don't have an age statement on it because they just didn't want to put an age statement on these releases, but they're all going to be around that seven, eight year old mark with generally speaking about five years in the first cask bourbon and about two years in the secondary finishing cask. In this case, that Cabernet Sauvignon wine cask and the wine cask came from the Toysner vineyard in Australia. Dingle have cooperated or I guess collaborated with that vineyard before for their Bielt on their release. It was a single pot still. They finished it off in the Pinot Noir casks from the Toysner Vineyard. And that's a more of a spicy, kind of kind of dark fruits wine. The notes it gave to the whiskey combined really well with the kind of spiciness of a pot, uh, spiciness of a pot still. But here for a single malt, they've gone with that Cabernet Sauvignon, which is a bit lighter, a bit fruitier, and a bit fresher, kind of in keeping with the theme of spring being a bit lighter, fruitier, and fresher. It comes in at 50.5% alcohol by volume or 101 proof. And I understand that there are 3000 bottles for the Irish market and about 5,600 bottles for the international market. So 
eight and a half thousand bottles for the whole world so it's a pretty limited release like some of the releases they've done have been I think up to 10,000 bottles or 12,000 bottles some of them were only down to 6,000 so it's a fairly limited edition release so it's not going to be around forever like most of these whiskies in the wheel of the year series they're not going to be around forever so if you are interested in kind of collecting them you might want to try and get that collection started soon but that's enough talking about the whiskey let's get into how it tastes let's go in for the nose and first off though that color it's really nice i'm not sure if it's coming through on camera it might show more in the bottle but it has this really nice almost kind of ruby red kind of almost pinkish color from that wine cask and right off the bat on the nose you're getting that wine cask influence. There are, like, there's blackberries, there's black currants, really nice kind of like stewed dark fruits like plums or those kind of syrup, you know, when you cook it down a bit and you get those juices, but the juices come out like they thicken up and it gets this almost syrupy kind of texture. You get a lot of that fruitiness and then that's balanced out or kind of, it's kind of, kind of harmonized out, I guess, with the kind of caramel notes you get from a good malt whiskey like the dingle malt whiskey has a very characteristic kind of almost floral almost herbal kind of sweetness to it and that's coming through here as well yeah and sitting on top of that kind of the base of that biscuity malt is there's some like really kind of citrusy orange peel like the orange zest like that kind of the orange oils you get from the, the skin of an orange and some kind of ginger spice and a little bit, a little bit of like almost toasted almonds. Not really strong, not super strong on the sweet there. It's just kind of in the background, but there's a nice hit of like gingery spice, that kind of warming spice on the nose. But yeah, the real dominant note, at least for me on this, is that wine cask influence, is that really dark fruits coming through, but not in like a, not a really heavy, like tannic way, more of a sweet way of you get those dark fruits. So let's go in for the palate and see if it says as fruity. Cheers. It's got this really syrupy, dense kind of texture, this dense kind of mouthfeel on the whiskey. As soon as it hits your palate, it kind of spreads out and it's really kind of thick. I wouldn't say oily, I'd say more on the like syrupy side where you get all these really almost tart blackberries and tart kind of plums like I know I said on the on the nose quite sweet on the palate a bit more tart a bit more like like when you get those blackberries they're maybe not a hundred percent ripe yet but they have that little like tart kind of character to them it has a little bit of a bite and that's coming through here it's still very sweet though it's still got that kind of caramel biscuity note but the fruitiness is less syrupy and more like almost like almost like more natural flavors coming through with that and again it's all on top of that base of that dingle malt that kind of characteristic almost herbal almost botanical notes you're getting in here mm, very nice i'm going to go in for a second sip see if you can find more see if you can find those kind of spicy notes i was getting on the nose let's go in again yeah that wine influence is really strong it's really upfront and as soon as you taste it, you get that wine influence. Second sip round, I was able to get kind of past it and get more of those spicy notes. It's still like ginger spice. It's still like that kind of crystallized ginger where it's quite sweet, but has a bit of spiciness to it. I'm getting some kind of oak spice. I wouldn't say like oak char, I wouldn't say like charred oak coming through, but more like the spicy characteristic you get from the oak where you get that little bit of a bite of spice coming through. And that's just helping to kind of almost accentuate the fruity notes because you have this kind of base layer of that biscuity malt, this base layer of that kind of spiciness and then you have the fruity notes kind of being big highlights, big kind of high points on the taste. So gonna go in again, focus on the finish and see what sticks around the longest. Cheers. Okay, so on the finish, as you kind of sit with it, you get a little bit of like a a tannic influence like you had a red wine but like nowhere near as strong it's like a little bit of that kind of like you can feel it in your cheeks kind of the the dryingness of that wine influence coming through also coming in at 50.5% alcohol it doesn't feel hot I can feel the warmth but it doesn't feel like it's hot or it's burning or anything like that it's quite sweet quite spicy the finish is I'd say not super long but it's definitely on the medium to long side of things where you get I'm getting a long kind of finish of sweetness and spice. I'm actually also getting a little bit of like a peppery, almost like a white pepper tingle on my tongue where I'm getting this little bit of spiciness kind of lingering on. I can feel that here. So it's just a nice kind of medium long finish. 
Before I give my final thoughts on the Dingle Connacht and Arik, if you're new here, scroll down, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I put out whiskey reviews like this one every Wednesday and on Fridays I put out cocktail recipes featuring whiskey and I will have a cocktail recipe featuring the Dingle Connacht and Arik this Friday. So if you want to see that, make sure you're subscribed. But right now, as to my kind of final wrap up, I'd say I like this whiskey. In terms of the positioning of it within the Wheel of the Year series, I wouldn't say it's my favourite because some of those releases, like the, the Lunasa one, the Samhain whiskey, they were really nice and I think they were just top notch. This is, I'm not going to say it's a bad whiskey, but just it's not my favourite within the Wheel of the Year series. If you're maybe looking to splurge and get just one bottle from the series, maybe start with one of those other ones like the, the Lunasa was really nice. Most people I think I've talked to say that one was their favourite or the Bieltona release, the single pot still one. If you're looking to collect them all and get this whiskey, you're not going to be disappointed. It's a very nice whiskey, but just a little bit overshadowed by the other ones, but still a very nice whiskey and I think I'm definitely going to keep on enjoying this. So I'm going to keep on enjoying this glass and I will see you next time. Sláinte. <laughs>